Welcome back. You're watching Stockwatch with me, Zanati Kuma. And joining me to take your stock-related questions tonight are Rikas Riedas from PSG Hall in One Reimsuch and Mark Dutoy from Oyster Catcher Investments. Uh, we are pre-recording, but uh, please uh, continue to send your questions uh, via email at stockwatch at bdtv.co.za or via SMS to 41392 or an X using the hashtag Stockwatch. Thanks so much for your time, gents. Um, yeah, straight into company news because I see that Cecil is running. Uh, Rikas, are you running after it? <laughs> no, um, I think with the recent results where, uh, to use the hackneyed um, expression, you know, everything but the kitchen sink was thrown into the to their results to write off, you know, write offs and things like that. Um, probably better than expected, and we've had a nice rally in Sassel, but at the moment it's still just going sideways. So. Um, uh, so I see the price at the moment just recovering from from um, the expected bad news, which possibly wasn't that bad, and a bit of a change in direction as far as their dividend policy is concerned, which I quite like, where they're now using cash flow rather than earnings. So it, that in itself is a sensible decision, which is uh, quite, which has been quite rare um, yeah. from management in the past so it's one to um keep in mind but you know even if things go better for Cecil, you're not going to turn the rope the rowing boat that is Cecil into a yacht all of a sudden so even if it starts doing well i still think in that chemicals slash um oil sector there are better opportunities offshore than than in Cecil. Yeah, and the rowing book that is the share uh, is really, really rocky uh, because it was it's quite interesting. It's very volatile because uh, when they released a production update, it seemed that the markets had maybe anticipated, maybe thought that the bottom is in until the results came and then the stock sank. Uh, when was it two days ago? And now we're back in green. I mean, this volatility, Mark, can we just expect that um, as long as there isn't any kind of sustainable growth in the actual business. Yeah, I think the volatility comes from the fact that all the earnings are coming out of the RAND um, oil price at the moment, so the South African energy business, and they've got a big US chemicals business at Lake Charles, and that's hardly making any money. So for me, until we see chemical prices um, start to go up meaningfully, I think that Sassel is going to continue to struggle to sell its investment case. But as soon as chemical prices start to go up, then they'll start generating dollars in America and be able to pay down that U.S. debt that they're sitting on. They've got $4.1 billion U.S. debt, 90 billion rand. Um, and once that deleveraging starts to come through, then I think the market can get more excited about Sassel. But um, there is a lot of overcapacity in the chemicals market. And so... In the near term, it's difficult to see how chemical prices can run. But, um, you know, so we keep our eye on the chemical market. And if we start to see those prices rising, then I think Cecil becomes a lot more interesting for me. Ah, all right. Well, talking about oil, uh, let's get into cars. Um, we Buy Cars reached a new height of 29 Rand 60. That was yesterday. Uh, today it's at 29 exactly. Is it uh, still a buy or not? Uh, Rikas, was this ever a buy for you? Um, it's not one that I've been um, concentrating on because I like a little bit more history in a company before I start taking a look at it. But certainly from a price momentum perspective has gone to a new high and just on a technical graph basis it can go to up to 30 to 50 roundabout but um yeah i'm probably a little bit over cautious and in, in saying that yeah i need more history before i um really start committing ah rickers they're driving with caution mark would you be driving with caution or uh yeah just a little bit of uh, acceleration into we buy cars <laughs> Uh, we buy cars in the business that we that we like, um, so we've really we really invested there. So we're very excited about the share price appreciation. Um, I think that yeah, I think that the there are tailwinds coming for for the motor industry um, for for we buy cars in particular. We're expecting interest rates to start coming down now, and we're expecting consumers to have a bit more money in their pockets in a year's time or so. So 
you know, the, the macro tailwinds are going to start to filter through for We Buy Cars, and they've still got a lot of market share that they can gain. They've still got new products that they can introduce, in particular in the insurance space. So, yeah, it's a business that we like, and I think that, um, I don't know, I mean, the share price in the short term might pull back a little bit, but certainly I think longer term you'll, you'll do well to hold, to hold the stock. Yeah, it also seemed like actually all the uh, other car counters uh, held on to the optimism that we saw on We Buy Cars as well. I understand that you're cautious about We Buy Cars specifically, Rickus, but would you be dabbling into uh, any of the car counters that we have on the JSE? Well, as Mark said, it's, it's, it's certainly going to become um, more affordable for the guy in the street to go and buy a car with it second hand or new. And as you said, we've... we've seen that the uh, movements of other companies in that sector, whether it be Motors, which is up about 8% in the past month, um, um, combined motor holdings, which, which had a huge rally over the past one or one or two days. So it's interesting, but um, cars are very cyclical. And if the consumer is going to have an easier time of it, of it because interest rates um, will possibly come down, inflation is coming down, there are a lot of other consumer stocks that um, I think is not as cyclical or, or not as volatile. So um, I tend to um, have you know something to do with motor vehicles fairly low down on my list if I want to go into the consumer space. Hmm. We're well, talking about the consumer space. There's a question on ShopRite. I feel like there's a question on ShopRite either every day or every second day. And I feel like it's just investors really wanting to go in there but wondering if to go there at these levels if, if that's a good idea so could you ask the panel their views on shop right and whether it's a good buy at these levels i guess the the main point is at these levels uh mark yeah i mean it is a i think that it is a good question because um you are paying quite a, a hefty multiple for shop rights but at the same time it's a great business i mean being taking more market share being smart about how they reinvest uh, profits into um, giving better pricing to consumers and thereby grabbing more market share, making it more difficult for their competitors. So I think it is a, a great business. Um, I mean, it would be nice if you were buying it at a, at a lower multiple, but that's not the case today. Um, but I think if, you, if you're looking to, to hold the investment for a decent time period, let's say for a five-year time period, then I think you can still, you can still buy the share. Um, if you're trying to beat kind of the average market returns, then maybe you have to look at something else that's a little bit cheaper. But yeah, I think if, if you if you want a decent quality company that's got earnings runway ahead of it still, um, I think you can still buy a lot. Yeah, that's the thing. Decent quality company. Um, do you ever need to kind of um, look too closely at what level you're buying in for a good quality company, uh, Rikas? Well, <clears throat> preferably when... Um, correlations of the markets go to one. In other words, we sit with huge turmoil and everything goes down. That's the time to start hunting for for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But to come back to Shoprite, yeah, it's 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 expensive, but there's also another small factor um, in its favour in that if foreign investment returns to local equities, that's one of the first companies mm -hmm. your foreign investors mm -hmm. going to buy. You know. You, um, he scarcely knows what ShopRite is, is all about, never mind everything lower on the list. So purely uh, purely on sentiment, the ShopRite price can go um, up just driven by by, um, by foreign buying. And, and ShopRite itself over the past month or so, um, it's actually underperformed other consumer shares, whether it be Mr. Price or even Pick and Pay for that matter because it was one of the first to start rallying mm -hmm. um, a, a couple of months ago. So, yeah, any scare in the market, a drop in shop at share price, and it would be a good idea to, um, if you don't have, at least yeah. um, buy in or add otherwise. Ah, all right. Let's go back into commodities. Uh, Sibanye is still water. Sibanye is close to a three-year low at the moment and must surely be close to or at the bottom now. There have been a raft of new announcements from the company in the last week, including announcing the successful refinancing and upsizing of its RAND revolving credit facility to 6 billion RAND, alongside a substantial 1.8 billion RAND gold prepay uh, agreement. 
What are the panel's views on taking a long-term position in Sibanye at current levels, also including its shift towards so-called green metals? Well, I mean, let's start off there with that first uh, sentence that says it must really be close to or at the bottom now. Is that any uh, clear uh, at this point, uh, Mark? I think... Uh... The problem that Sabania has is that of the four PGM miners, it has the weakest uh, balance sheet. It's got it's got the least amount of um, of cash on the balance sheet. In fact, it's it's in a net debt position, um, and the PGM prices are not helpful at at this point in the cycle. So, I mean, I think that Sabania is going to have to rationalise its business further um, in a, in order to kind of uh, wait out this period of, of weak prices, and until PGM prices turn, it is vulnerable. Um, as an equity shareholder, you do worry about it because as they do deals um, like streaming deals and forward sales of gold, I mean, you're giving away the upside for equity investors. So, you, so the debt holders are going to get their slice of the pie first before we get our slice of the pie. Mm -hmm. um, so I think Tabanya at this point is a very speculative speculative buy, um, and it can definitely go lower as, you know, if it has to do, um, I mean, it, it issued convertible debt at a point, which is diluted for equity shareholders. Um, um, and if things get really bad, it might have to do a rights issue, although that's quite still mm -hmm. at least a year away in my view. So um, things can still, I mean, the share price can still go down from here. And for us, I think we just wait to see a better PGM price um, recovery than, than what we've seen so far. Yeah. Uh, Rikas, I mean, uh, how um, how should you be looking at their uh, balance sheet debt situation at the moment? Because even with the announcement that they uh, got today with the green uh, loan for their lithium project in Finland, they did say that it's also just going to kind of help them in terms of being financially flexible. Um, yeah. yeah. What are your yeah. levels of, of caution, worry, uh, or maybe optimism at this point? Well, exactly the same as Marx. They, they're sitting with a weak balance sheet. They've, they've got some reprieve in the, in the sense of the um, um, forward selling that they've, uh, you know, for the forward selling contract that they've done, the refinancing, the deal you are talking about. But um, all of that goes, you know, that doesn't make you profitable. That just helps you cover your, um, your costs and your research and your development as far as the green energy is concerned i mean they're spending a lot on technology that's not yet proven you know as far as their nickel and cobalt mm. is concerned so there's a bit of risk on that as well so um i'm not interested in it yet because the price has been going sideways since um about november of last year so there's no trend there and i don't i like buying things which are which are going up and if things go wrong um then the surely this must be the bottom just becomes it was a bottom with another bottom to come yeah all right um one last thing on sabanya still water um mark on that question that came through is the viewers also asking about your feelings towards the um the green metals uh effort and a lot of the time when you ask people, you know, what company are you going to go for um, to participate in this kind of uh, greener future exposure? It's usually, um, I don't know, BHP with the Anglo-American with the copper exposure, but even BHP uh, and um, some other, is it Glencore? Um, but with, people haven't been mentioning Sibanya at this point. Is just is that balance sheet clouding everything at this point? Yeah, I think the balance sheet is a is a, a worrying factor at this at this point. Um, I mean, they have they have done well to articulate their strategy of moving into the more EV uh, focused metals. Um, but if you look at the income statements, they don't make any money from 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 those metals at this point yeah so um the income statement is still heavily focused on on the pgm side um they lost making in the us they in south africa the pgms are doing are doing okay um and they're getting a real boost from the south african gold 
mines, but mm. these mines are old mines, and the life of mine is is quite a bit shorter than than Harmony, or or and a lot shorter than Goldfields and Anglo Gold. Mm. So you know, I think it's it's not a it's not a great stock if you want to play kind of an EV type theme. And I think that the copper names, like you mentioned, um, Anglo American and Glencore, are in my view better if you want to if you want to play the 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 expansion of renewables, the investment in infrastructure, in, in, in investment in the grid, energy grids, particularly in China. China's running out a massive grid infrastructure, infrastructure project. Um, and I think, you know, EV vehicles use a lot more copper. That kind of, that kind of theme is better played out through, through copper names. Ah, all right. Well, um, the, the, the subject to this one is terrible twins, one is still water and amplats. Um, the question goes, I'm interested in how the panel analyzes uh, the options. Basically, um, is it a sell or hold? Uh, and what does one consider in making these decisions? I think we've spoken about the caution on Sibanya. What about amplats, uh, Rikus? You know, it's, it's the same um, or it's a similar story to Sibanya. I'm not bearish or negative on platinum group metal companies. I'm just not interested because they're not going anywhere. Their time will come and you'll make good money out of it. But just looking at the price movement, it's simply not there. So as with Sabania, Anglo Plus trading sideways, there's different gears. Obviously, there's the split off from, possible split off from Anglo American looming. That's going to introduce a, a corporate action flavor into it. Certainly better quality uh, operationally than Sabania. Therefore, if it starts, if the platinum group metal start moving out and these guys start making money, you're going to get it possibly a lot of more operational gearing out of, of Sabania and it will outperform Anglo American. Well, if you're prepared to sit and wait while things are going sideways, then Anglo American or Amplats at least mm. is a little bit safer because it's got a better balance sheet. Mm. All right, Mark, Amplats. Yeah, I agree. I mean, so Amplats is a um, has a, has better quality all body than than Sabania in the certainly in the PGM space. Um, they've got a longer life of mine. Um, they are. By comparison, a better quality quality business, uh, and so if you expect pigeon prices to kind of be sideways or maybe even go lower, then Amplat is a better company to own, uh, less risk in it. Um, if you're expecting a big rally in pigeon prices, which some people are, but we are not, then Sabanya is the one to own because its earnings are going to go from naught to you know five ten rand, and uh, the share price will go up with it. But but it does it it does need those PGM prices to 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 go up in the next six to twelve months. Ish. Yeah. All right. Uh let's go into Afrimat. Um, Afrimat has dropped roughly fifteen percent since its recent high over a month ago. Is this an opportunity to get into a well-positioned company at a good price, or are there some underlying problems that the market is pricing in? Yeah, quite a good uh, question, Erikus. Yeah, well, um, first of all, you know, if you want to be in, in resources, not necessarily a single product company like Amplats or Sabania, Afrimat is a far, far, far better type of operation because of its diversification. You know, it's moving into cement and all sorts of um, other projects and they've allocated or they've made good decisions in, in moving into those businesses in the past and you've got to trust that management will do the same. So it's a great company to hold if you are of the opinion that we are at or close to the bottom in the resource cycle. That is to a large extent dependent on what's going to happen in China. If China can get um, not only their infrastructure spend but local consumer spend going, um, that would be very good for resource prices and resource companies. I'm not so sure whether China is going to get that right within the next or within the short term, let's say. So I'm very cautious about resources at the moment. But certainly if we start seeing um, resource prices trading um, upwards, then Afrimat is, um, although pretty junior as a company, yeah. I think an excellent operation is something I would be into. 
that, that's actually a, a, an interesting one. As diversified as it is, would you still be looking at, at it from a kind of uh, resource uh, lens, Mark? Well, I think, um, I mean, Afromat have, have done fantastic deals over the years, and that's really what's taken the company from being a, a small cap um, industrial business or industrial minerals business um, to getting into the more medium cap space. Um, the latest deal, the acquisition of Lafarge is, I mean, you couldn't have timed it better. Mm. Um, now we're spe expecting better Mac out of South Africa and, and they bought that business for, for almost nothing. Um, so there's a lot of optionality there for them. I think the, the recent weakness in Afrimet's share price is probably because of the iron ore price has dropped um, and one of their um, business lines is is their iron ore mine, um, their Mining. So, so that's in the in the short term a bit of a headwind on on their earnings um but i think you know afrimat is a is a company that we really back management team they've done a, a great job in the past and uh, we look forward to good things coming from their recent acquisition of lafarge all right gents uh before we get to your stock picks there is a, a question uh on long-term prospects for cap industrial and San santova i'll give uh, one to each of you. Rikas, take your pick. Well, um, let's go CAP. Um, the CAP's business plan has always been to be diversified across industries in order to, um, you know, to eliminate some of the ups and downs in the various sectors that they invested in. Over the past number, number of years, nothing has worked for them. Um, specifically on the uh, um, on the car manufacturing side of things, not car, you know, but but, but um, in the vehicle side of things, shall I shall I say? Yeah. Um, I think if we do get um, local growth and and car being very much locally focused, that could be very interesting. Um, as as a counter so i'm keeping an eye on that um because of the diversification and in as much as everything went wrong for them even though they tried to diversify the opposite might also be true mm. marcus santova one that's on your radar um not currently on our radar i think it's maybe a little bit small for for, yeah. for our funds but um a very well-run logistics business um the, I mean, they are impacted by things that, that impact logistic, like, like problems at the port impacts their business. Yeah. But uh, a well-run business, and I think it has got good prospects. And, I mean, if the share price doesn't go up, then I wouldn't be surprised if, if there's a buyout coming for, for the business. It's, it's, not, it's not that big, and, and someone larger could easily swallow it up. So, mm. you know, I, I think you can, you can earn cent over, but the share price probably doesn't do much until a buyout offer uh. comes. Right, I hear you on that. Well, gents, let's get uh, to uh, stock picks for today. Rikas, what are you choosing? It's in the US and it's a um, retailer called Target. Um, you know, they sort of do a lot of things, whether it be personal beauty, whether it be food, whether um, it would be appliances. So just one of those retail giants in the US. Since the pandemic, they've underperformed severely if you measure them against things like Walmart. They came out with results very recently, a couple of days ago. So this is an early take on that, but for the first time in a number of years, they managed to increase revenue. They have discounted prices, which, which pushed up revenue, and they've increased margins. Any company that can do an increase in turnover and margins, um, that flows through to income and cash. So I'm betting on this as a recovery situation, considering that they are trading at a price earnings of about uh, 15 forward, and, and Walmart has doubled that. And it's in, in essence the same operation competing on the same field. Um, um, I think Target's going to play some catch up, and it's got a brilliant dividend history. It's, it's never decreased its dividend in about 38 years. So um, they know what they're doing. But I think they um, lost it a little bit, and I've got full confidence that they will get back on track and and regain 
um, the evaluation when measured against things like Walmart. Yeah. Mark, what do you have full confidence in today? So today I'm buying MTN, business whose share price has really been under pressure over the last year. Um, so, and the reason for that is that they've got the, they're the largest telecom operator in Nigeria, and Nigeria's had terrible currency devaluation. We think that that uh, devaluation uh, of the Naira is going to be more in line with inflation going forward, so less than 20% a year, let's say. And, uh, and that means that the earnings out of Nigeria in the MTN group can start to, to improve now and to grow. So that's one part of the business, which I think is now bottomed and the, the headwinds are behind them. I mean, we saw them do the recent deal, the recent Towers deal, which also de-risks the currency within their business. And it's something that MTN has been working on for a number of years now to de-risk the, the exposure to, US, to the US dollar and to currency risk. So we hope that that's now um, behind them and they can start to focus more on operational uh, type gains. South African business is doing well, the number two network in South Africa. And we're expecting good macro tailwinds for South Africa. And then the third component is their fintech business, their mobile money business. Um, recently, uh, MasterCard took a stake in that business. Um, obviously, they see value there. And we see their competitor Airtel is looking to IPO their fintech business in Africa. And that will be a further kind of value look through it to see what the market, what kind of market value is, uh, what kind of value the market mm -hmm. puts on these type of uh, mobile money businesses in Africa. And I think that there'll be a further uplift in, in, in the share price from there. So really it's earnings recovery story and, um, and uh, yeah, and then the multiple will probably contract more in line with long-term long -term, uh, multiple views um, and share prices should appreciate from this point. Ah, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time and for your analysis today, gents. Much appreciated. That is all for tonight's Stock Watch. Thanks to our guests, Rikas Riedas from PSG Hall in Juan Reimsach and Mark Dutoy from Oyster Catcher Investments. Up next, the close. Stay tuned. <laughs>